how are we doing, everybody? Good. Uh, awesome. Hey, who uh, who knows what time we're moving to next week? 11 a.m. They heard. That's good. That's really good. So that's super exciting. 11 a.m. Uh, who's going to be there? Yes. Everyone. Everyone's just like, I'm going to be there. It's going to be great. Um, and for first timers, hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Jake, and me and my wife, Holly. We, we are running this thing. Um, Mitch, I've actually got a photo of us on the back. No, I'm just kidding. It's, Mitch, it's, it's Mitch's first time. Let's get up for Mitchell. Um, what if I had, like, Bible verses or something? And it's, but I don't, so it's okay. Um, we love the Bible here. Uh, so there's actually not going to be any of my points or anything on the back because I want you guys to just soak it in. You can write some notes, do whatever you want. Um, we're in the middle of our series, Heart for the Hills. Uh, how to love Mount Barker, how can we be representations of the love of Jesus, how, how can we do that? And tonight, I've got a bit of a full-on word, if that's okay. Uh, it's titled, The Pursuit of Happiness is a Lie. Can I go there? I think I, think I can. Has you ever heard, um, or have you ever said, oh, I'm just going to do what makes me happy? Or like, let's say... Um, you know, someone's doing something quite questionable and you're just like, well, at least they're happy. Have, have, you, ever heard, have you ever heard that? Yeah. It's just like happiness is like this thing that we, we try to obtain for our life. In, um, in school, I ran this like Bible, what do you call it? Like a Bible study thing. And I mean, Mitch, did you ever go to that thing? No, I was, I was trying to ask if you went up to... Um, Nathan went. Right? Did you actually? Sweet. Uh, that's one person. Um, Anyway, one of, the, one of the days we thought, do you know what would be cool? If we get a video of us interviewing people down in Rundle Mall, what the meaning of life is. And to people, like to students in school, they'll be watching that like, oh man, you went outside of Murray Bridge? That's crazy. Like, <laughs> like I literally had people in my class that went to Mount Barker for a holiday. And it's like, we're in Rundle Mall. Anyway, so get this. So um, my wife got a new laptop and I went through my old hard drive and I found the video. Uh, Mitch, we're actually going to play that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, I, but I watched it, and get this. So we interviewed 16 people. What's the meaning of life? What's, what's the goal that you want to achieve in life? And out of those 16, two of them were Bible-believing Christians, but 11 of them said happiness. So what's, what's the meaning of life? To find happiness, to get happiness, to, to obtain happiness. What's the goal for your life? Just to be happy. Just, just to be happy. And I want to just... Crack a couple myths tonight with the Bible. Um, if you get offended with me, I'm so sorry. I literally am apologizing uh, in advance, but let, we're all friends here, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. John 16, 24. Who loves the Word of God? Oh, yeah. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, right? Now, we hear that all the time, but then it, get, it has this little tag on at the end. It says that your joy will be made full. Does that mean that you can measure joy? If it says your joy will be made full, does that mean that there is partial joy? Does that mean that there is a little bit of joy? Does that mean that there are things that the world offer that is partial joy and that Jesus is saying, I can make your joy full? Is that what that means? Well, let's, let's figure it out. Here's something that I believe, that you can be unhappy, but you can still have joy. But you can't be unhappy and still have happiness. Does that kind of... I know that makes sense. But as long as I'm happy is, is a line. Here's why. I was watching, uh, when we were getting our new car, I was like looking at the car reviews and all of the adverts are like, if you get this BMW XC5, CX5, whatever it's called, you will look like me with a suit and you'll get a lot of money and you'll have a lot of partners and you will do this and that. And it's like, it's picturing, if you buy this car, you'll be so happy. I mean, if you have this Zinger box meal, uh, did somebody say KFC? And then they're outside. Have you seen those KFC ads and everyone's like happy? Well, have you ever eaten KFC? Like, people are usually just in their cars, just so grease-filled. No one's, like, smiling. Like, oh, this is amazing. But if you get that job, if you get that relationship, if you get that retirement plan, if you get that, if you get this, if you get that, then you'll be happy. But happiness isn't full joy. It's just partial joy. It's temporal. Happiness is temporal. It's based upon, what our situations circumstances, things that happen in life, the ebbs and flows of life. It's temporal. But I don't believe that the goal in life is to strive after something temporal. Yeah. I don't believe it. That's why I think that the, the, the goal to find happiness in everything that we do is actually not fulfilling because we don't, we're actually not fulfilled by happiness. It, it just doesn't fill us up. It's awesome for a couple of seconds. It's awesome for a couple of seasons. 
It's awesome when the circumstances and everything is aligned and it's all perfect. But what happens when things make you unhappy? Does that mean that you no longer have the meaning to life? Does that mean that, that everything sucks? That it's a, that, what, what, like, come on, give me happiness. That's not what happens. The pursuit of happiness is a lie. I want you to write that down. Write that down. Write down. The pursuit of happiness is a lie. Happiness, the root word of that, can actually you can derive it to situations or circumstantial happenings. Happiness, happening. You get happy when something is happening to others or to you. You get happy. And there's this sentence that I want to kind of crack open tonight and really ask the presence of God to come into our life to. As long as I'm happy... If we are filled with the presence of God, maybe it's your first time in church and tonight you're saying, hey, Jesus, come into my life. That's amazing. Let's say we know Jesus. We should not be saying, as long as I'm happy. We should be saying, as long as I'm healthy. Yeah. Okay? Let's write that down. Write down. I'm not going to say, as long as I'm happy. I want to shift my focus to, as long as I'm healthy. Yeah. Health. I don't just want to be filling myself with things that's temporal, that's going to fade away. That, that relies on my bank account, that relies on my relationship, relies on my job status, relies on this, relies on that. I actually don't want that. I want to rely on something that is eternal in Jesus. He fulfills me. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. You know, if I just did everything that made me happy, here's what an average day of my eating would look like. I would wake up and I would go to our fridge, a very nice fridge, and I would get a pavlova from Woolworths. And I would eat that for breakfast. Who loves pavlova? Yuck. Um, no, seriously, am I, do, do people like that food here? Well, it's not the best for you, but it tastes amazing. And then after that, I would go to KFC, I would get a twist of no tomato, and I would add sweet and sour sauce to that thing, and I would put it in a box. But they've actually, um, they've actually added coleslaw to the twister. Has anyone known that? It's ruined it. It's... It's a mess. Oh, so I would get, I would get a Zinger box because the Twister doesn't make me happy anymore. So then I would get my Pavlova, then I would get KFC, and then for dinner, I'd, um, what would we do? We'd get like pizza or something, or pasta or pizza or something. And then I'd be so happy eating that thing. But then I'd spend 17 hours on the toilet. <laughs> I would have type 16 diabetes. I would be like getting my toes amputated. I'd be like, if I was eating that, I'd like, be happy until I realised that my health does not correlate to my happiness. Can I go there? And I think we've been fed this lie in society that happiness is the best thing ever. But what happens when you don't have happiness? I think that we need to start shifting our focus. If we want to be people that are filled with the love of Christ, we need to not be so concerned with our happiness on circumstances, but our health. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. We love kids. They're going to be doing their thing. So you can like just, that's, that's all right. Let's get up for the kids. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the kids. Um, and we can get happiness in a moment, but what we really need to look at is, am I healthy? Are my relationships healthy? I don't want to call anybody out, but can we just be thinking about this stuff right now? Am I somebody that is living out a life of health? Do people, when they come into my life, are they seeing a healthy relationship? Are they seeing a healthy steward of finances? Are they seeing a healthy marriage? Are they seeing a healthy business? Are they, th are they seeing health? Or do they just see temporal happiness, but the rest is unhealthy? Romans 15, 13. I promise you guys will like me at the end of this. I know you're like, just, what are you saying? This is so rude. But may the God of hope fill you with all joy, all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Psalm 16, 11, I love this. It says, you make known to me the path of life. Who's grateful for Jesus? Yeah. You will fill me with joy. You can measure it in your presence. In your presence. It doesn't say when things are going great. It doesn't say when you get that BMW. It doesn't say when this is working, when that's working. It says, you will fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. And, and as I was preparing this, I was thinking, if I say that the pursuit of happiness is a lie, people might be thinking, is God just this guy that doesn't like happiness? But it literally says here, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That Jesus loves when we are happy. He loves when things are cheerful. He, literally, he loves a cheerful giver. He loves when we're joy. He loves when we're abounding in the abundance of life. But if that is our goal, to just go from this thing that's going to make me happy to this thing that's going to give me worth, to this happiness, to that, to that, we have missed the goal. I want to check my health, not my happiness. 
someone write down, I need to check my health more often. I'm not just talking about your diet or your fitness regime. I'm talking, am I filled with the fruits of the Spirit that bubbles up fruit and healthiness and, and health and rejuvenation and, and pointing people towards hope and joy in Jesus Christ? You know, Jesus never promised happiness as well, but he did promise his presence. It says in the Word of God that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Who's thankful for that? Yeah. And it's... It says here that we find joy in his presence. Jesus is never like, I promise you happiness because things are going to suck in the world. Things, Hey, you might be here and things might be pretty rubbish right now. And you might be unhappy. But who is thankful that you can still have joy in his presence? Are you thankful for that? You might be in a very unhappy relationship, but thankfully that we serve a good God that wants a relationship with us and that we can have joy, peace, kindness, love. He is filling us every single day if we go to his presence. Jesus never promised happiness, but he did promise his presence. And that's where we'll find joy. At my old church, I was doing what Nathan's doing right now. I was filming stuff. And when I was in Bible college, I was filming the testimonies for our church. Uh, who knows what that is? It's like a testimonial thing and you show you like when you've had life change and it's amazing, right? And I reckon I spent well, countless hours in about like 50 or 60 people's homes over the time span that I was doing it right. And we would film and it would be very awkward. Have you ever done that before? It's awkward. You're just sitting there and then we're just like, hey, this needs to go for three minutes and it's like 58 minutes long and (laughs) you need to cut down everything and it just doesn't work. But um, I'll be sitting there and they'll be sharing about how Jesus has like done some amazing things and then they would say like a, a situation or a circumstance in their life that was rubbish. And there, I just pulled apart some, some main ones that I remember. And, it, and I remember being in the living room with someone that had an ice addiction. And their children got taken away from them. And I remember being in a house with people that had like crippling debt. And I was in a house with people that um, they've experienced affairs or like death, like a lot of grief. And I, and I experienced a lot of these testimonies right in front of my face. And I was filming. And then when I put the camera down, we'd share a meal, we'd be talking. And not once... Did anybody say that it was because of happiness that their life was changed? When I put the camera down and when I was sitting down at the table in front of these people, they were crying not because their bank account got that extra digit or because their happiness got them that vehicle or that relationship. It was always Jesus, man. And, And I just have this radical belief That happiness cannot change a circumstance or a situation, only Jesus can. Happiness can't turn a marriage around, only Jesus can. Happiness can't fix a broken heart, only Jesus can. Jesus never promised happiness, but he did promise his presence. Who's thankful for Jesus? A-Train loves it, and I love you. (laughs) The pursuit of happiness is a lie. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, I was on my pursuit for happiness. And I'll be trying anything. I'll be going from relationship to this, to that, to trying this, to trying that. I'll be on this pursuit to happiness. But then when I found out that I needed to switch from a pursuit of happiness to a pursuit of his presence, a pursuit of Jesus Christ, when I allowed him into my life, I realized this, that I've actually never been happier. When I stopped searching for happiness and I turned to the one that will fill me with his presence every single day, I've never been happier. Because I can be in a rubbish situation but still have joy. And I could be going through a trial but I've still got his peace. And I could be going through a tough time but I know that he loves me. And I know that he won't forsake me.